Hey guys, what's happening? So, it's been a while since I've made a 3D printing video. Um, yeah, actually, I've been busy though. I've been designing new parts and new extruder systems. And But I saw this the other day on Amazon, and I thought it was pretty cool. It's a uh, bimetal uh, heat break for a uh, V6 uh, hot end right here, E3D. Um, yeah, they actually make them for all different kinds of hot ends. But I think they kind of copied the idea off the uh, Mosquito. You know, with the bimetal and the copper. But, um, yeah, so this is actually my uh, my custom my little extruder system I made based on the uh, Bontech BMG extruder. Uh, but actually, I've been making some new custom stuff. I'll, I'll make another video about it based on this uh, NEMA 14 right here. So take a look at the size difference between the NEMA Ultra Light NEMA 14 versus the NEMA 17 Pancake. Well, yeah, we're talking tiny. So I got a whole new system based on that. Alright, so this is my little custom extruder system right here. So, this is actually my first design, and the blower fan was actually in the back. It actually works fine. Um, and just have, in my new design, I'm actually going to make it an ultra light. So, um, but the whole reason for this video was just for this uh, heat break thing right here. Um, yeah, I just thought it was cool, and hopefully, I can prevent my jamming. Like last night, it jammed. I was doing some uh, 3D printing uh, power distribution things in it somehow locked up and stop extruding but one of the cool things about this system and my new system is that I wanted something that could come out easy so in case I had a jam it wasn't like a nightmare to take the whole extruder apart I could just take three screws out and boom the whole thing's out I can I can uh, fix the jam or whatever so put that on uh, fire it up and we'll start doing some printing so anytime I actually have a jam I uh, like to heat it up a lot um, that actually helps free up the jam alright um, yeah I can't get the jam undone so what I'm going to do is take the sock off yeah. can't wait till my new extruder system is done well it's already done I just got to print it out this thing is just I mean this some annoyances, but yeah, it's, it's actually sometimes what you do is you have to heat it up to get this thing off to separate the actual nozzle from the, the heater block right there. Just because of the the what's it called? If you don't heat it up, it sometimes act the the filament can act as like a glue. So I don't know if this is the right thing. Right? Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm loosening it up before I turn it off here. Actually, I might as well take the whole thing off. That way, I won't have any problem getting it out. Because sometimes, like the I think I can figure out what the hell's yeah, it's, it's stuck right there. Yeah. Why is it stuck in there? That's weird. Yeah, you can see can you see that right there? So for some reason it's not transferring heat correctly. I'm not sure yet. But I'm just curious now what the hot end move can I feed the filament through. So yeah, it's locked up before it even gets to the, what's it called? Like it's locked up before it even gets to the hot end right there. To, I mean to the nozzle. Alright, so. Since I'm going to replace the, uh, the heat brake, I'm just going to shut it off and then pull it out. So this is going to be pretty evident why I design my extruder systems the way I do. I'm gonna do this with one hand. So I got the whole thing out with one hand. Three screws, totally out. So for this point, I can pull this out, separate the heat block. Yeah, three screws, out. All right, so I hooked up one of my extra heater blocks just so I could get this thing out of here. So as you notice, if you can see this coming out right now, I have a... Uh, Man, this jam is so badly, I'm gonna jam so bad. I'm going to hit with my torch real fast just so I can separate it, man. It's a little nuts. Like, it's somewhere jammed in here, I think. I'm not sure. Definitely some heat creep issues. Even though I'm actually using uh, thermal paste, it's kind of weird. Oop. It's melting my soft jaws. Ah, finally got it off. But it's melting my soft jaw. <laughs> 
All right, here's a look at the heat break side by side. That's the original one. So I also notice that this goes up a little bit more. Oh, this goes up a little bit higher. If you can see that. Hope you can see it in the camera. But it looks like the diameter go, it goes up a little higher up. So I might have to trim down my little PTF E tube to fit. All right, so I'm gonna get this thing in there. I'm gonna actually make sure you use a uh, thermal paste because you want to be able to actually. Uh, pull, so then what this says when you need start thermal paste, it actually draws more heat. You want to draw the heat out of that thing in, in these cooling fins right here. Like what you what you don't want is melting plastic going up. And actually, that was my problem, right? The melting plastic was creeping up too high into the system, and that's what was. So instead of actually melting in the in the uh, in the hot end down here, right? It's supposed to be melting down here, not in here. So you're trying to keep it melted down here and draw and draw the heat out. All right. So on this side, I'm not going to use thermal paste because I don't want to draw heat from up into the block into the stem. So I'm trying to prevent that. I'm trying to keep the heat down here. So no thermal paste there. All right, so while this thing's heating up again to 240 ABS, I'm actually not printing ABS, but um, I have my one, two, three blocks on here to reset the uh, alignment here of the uh, Z. Well, as this thing's heating up, I'm getting ready to lug this in there. Um, so if you're new to 3D printing, um, you know, on a direct drive uh, extruder, you just need about one millimeter of retraction. On a Bowden six millimeter, I mean, I don't know, because with the Bowden tube, you have slack in it. So you got to pull the slack out. So, um, yeah, I, I, I mean, a millimeter, half millimeter, I mean, that prevents a little bit of the stringing, but because you don't want to pull it, if you pull the filament out too much in, you're going to be uh, sucking in, uh, melt the plastic too far up in your, your nozzle here, or you're not your nozzle, but your... Uh, Heater block. Hey, right, let's see if this thing jams up again. It's pretty good. Got good first layer. All right, done a couple prints. Uh, actually, we're probably about 30 hours worth of printing and no jams. So I think I feel like I, I saw that heat creep issue. Uh, yeah, these this never got hot. My my hot end never got hot. So I knew I was uh yeah I wasn't like undercooling it. And that was actually a concern I had. So, I mean, a lot of times it's a combination of just retraction, you know, and getting the right kind of, like, heat distribution. Um, but, yeah, looking good. I mean, so, yeah, it was frustrating, you know. I'd come out here and be, like, a multi-hour multi print, and it would just jam up and stop printing out. So, um, all right, put a link down below if you want it. Yeah, I, I, like I said, they, they uh, make them for all different hot ends. So, yeah, I definitely would recommend it. All right, here's my new design. Take a look. I'll do a more in-depth review about it. Nemo 14, direct drive, BMG gears, linear rail, BL touch, ultra small, ultra light, ultra compact.